Hello friends, this video on data handling part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us have a look at a grouped frequency distribution table. So the table would look somewhat like this. So 0 to 40, 1. 40 to 60, 2. 60 to 80, again 2. 80 to 100, 5. So you see that it, it is a normal frequency distribution table just that you have divided the data or you have divided the entry into groups so that you can have some frequency for each of them. Now when we talk about this grouped frequency distribution table, so here there are certain terminologies which we very commonly use. The first terminology is a class interval. So what is a class interval? Each group is called a class interval. So basically 40 to 60 is a class interval, 60 to 80 is a class interval, 80 to 100 is a class interval. So each of these is a class interval. So that, that's the term that is being used. So we do not call it group. Now obviously these are all groups but terminology wise we give it a term called class interval. Upper class limit. Now every class interval will have a lower limit and a upper limit. Like when you look at this 40 to 60. So 40 is the lower limit, 60 is the upper limit. So the upper limit of the class interval is called upper class limit. And similarly the lower limit of the class interval like 40 is called the lower class limit. Now when you look at this 60, so 60 is a upper class limit for this interval but 60 is a lower class limit for this interval. Next is the size of a class interval or a width of a class interval. So what is the size of a class interval? So that is given by the difference between the upper and the lower limit of a class interval. So let us see if I want to find out the size of this class interval. So the size would be equal to upper class limit minus lower class limit which is equal to 20. So the size of the class interval would be 20. Now the size could be anything so it depends on what is the value of the lower limit and the upper limit. So these are few things which are related to the grouped frequency distribution table. Now whenever we have to make a grouped frequency distribution table the, the most uh, critical part or the most challenging part is to understand how to make groups is to understand how to decide the class intervals. So that is the most challenging part of making a grouped frequency distribution table. Now when we talk about these class intervals, now one very interesting concept is this exclusive and inclusive class interval. Now let me give you an example to understand why are we talking about exclusive and inclusive class interval. Now let us say that we have a data a set of data of the score of students. Now somebody scored 40, somebody scored 42, some scored 92, some scored 63, some scored 75 and so on. Now if I say that I divide this set of data into groups. So let's say that the first group is 40 to 60, maybe the first group is 20 to 40, second group is 40 to 60, third group is 60 to 80, fourth is 80 to 100. So this is how I have divided this set of data into groups. Now what about this 40? Where will the 40 come? Whether 40 will be included in 20 to 40 or 40 will be included in 40 to 60. So in which class interval are we going to include the data 40? Because in the first interval we say it is from 20 till 40. The second we say it is from 40 till 60. So 40 is present in both these class intervals. So where exactly do I include the data 40? Where do I count 40? So this might be a challenge in a lot of cases. So in order to avoid this challenge, this concept of exclusive and inclusive class interval has been introduced. So let us see what are these. So first we will talk about exclusive class interval. Exclusive. Exclusive is derived from the word excluded when we do not include something. 
So what is not included in the exclusive class interval? Here lower class limit is included but upper class limit is excluded. So that means when you say exclusive class interval that means if we are saying 20 to 40 that actually means that 40 is not included in that class interval because it is an exclusive class interval. So if you say that this is an exclusive class interval in that case this data 40 will not come into this group 40 will come into the other group because the lower limit is included but the upper limit is not included so in the first class interval all those data starting from 20 till 39 will be included so 40 will not be included so that is exclusive class interval so again, let us look at this data. So here, this kind of data where we write it as 0 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80. So in each of these cases, the upper limit is not included. So whenever you have a data like 60 or 80 or 40, they will always fall into these. Like a, a data 40 will be counted in this group. A data 80 will be counted in this group. So it, it will not be counted in these groups because the upper class limit is excluded. So this is called exclusive class interval. Now let us learn about inclusive class interval. So I hope you would have understood this by now. This means that both the lower limits and the upper limits are included. So in this case, how do we write the groups? This is how we write the groups. So when we say that the upper limit is also included, in that case, when you write 0 to 40, so 40 is also included into this group. So the next group should start from 41, right? Because in this case, 40 is already included here. So in this 41 to 60, so 60 is included here. So the third group should start from 61. Again, 80 is included here. So the fourth group should start from 81 and so on. So now this is how you distinguish between exclusive and inclusive class intervals. So exclusive class intervals, wherever you have the upper limit of the first group as the lower limit of the second group. So whenever you observe this trend that the upper limit of first group is lower limit of second group. Again, upper limit of second group is lower limit of third group. Upper limit of third group is lower limit of fourth group. So whenever you observe this pattern, that means it is an exclusive class interval where the upper class limit is excluded in each group. But when you observe something like this, where everything is unique, so every lower limit and upper limit, they are unique. They are not similar to any other group. So that would mean that it is an inclusive class interval. Now, th this you might think that this is something which I am teaching you, which is out of your syllabus. But this is a very important concept because this question might come to your mind that uh, how, how do I arrange? How do I know that 40 is, in, uh, is up? is a part of the first group or it is a part of the second group. So that is why it is very important to understand this concept of exclusive and inclusive class interval. Now here in this lesson where as we move forward we will mostly deal with exclusive class intervals. So that, that's the most common one which we will deal with. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.